Hornsey, welcome. But we'll start at Hawthorne, where the Alistair Clarkson conundrum has continued for at least another week after he once again made himself the headline. Um, he milks a free kick as good as anyone in the competition. And he did so on this occasion again. Alistair said that about Papley. Uh, yes. Yep. Just a moment ago. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just don't talk about opposition players and clubs. He's a hypocrite. If anyone says anything about his players, he's the first one to jump up and down. So to, for him to comment on, on Papley, it's hypocritical. Yeah, it's a developing story. Sydney Caro clearly not happy. Andrew Pridham saying on the weekend uh, it was essentially drive-bys that only serve to diminish his standing as a coach. Very strong comments. We'll get to your thoughts on that shortly. But he will be issued a please explain by the AFL tomorrow, mainly for these comments. Low-scoring low game, you know, the free kicks are 22, 13 against. Um, it's nearly like an extra player on the ground. It's hard, but this is the way it goes. So this is the uh, repeat offender list that we can look at with Alistair Clarkson, Matthew. Obviously, it began in 2006. He received a suspended fine for abusing umpires on a flight. He was actually fined $20,000 in that last one, 2017. 15000 of that suspended when he says he was, said he was not able to comment on the disgraceful umpiring. We also have a statement tonight from Rob Kerr, the new boss of the Umpires Association, basically saying it's inappropriate to use that forum of post-game or any press conference to be criticising umpiring in a game. And um, the suspended... Well, I hope it's not a suspended fine. I hope the AFL stand up to Alistair Clarkson on this one. The Swans would have made some form of complaint if he hadn't been given a please explain. I don't know how, why he had to wait to the end of the round to issue a please explain either. But um, anyway, Alistair addressed all of this on AFL 360 tonight. Fascinating watching. If you're listening to my whole press conference, it was pretty measured and composed. And I, I spoke about swings and roundabouts in terms of um, free, free kicks that, that come and go your way. Or otherwise, um, that's the that's the game. I, I I didn't think I was um, in any way being disrespectful to the um, either the umpires nor nor Tom Papley. I'm quite happy never to do any media rubber, you know that. <laughs> so I'm happy not to have an opinion at all. Um, we're we're asked for opinion. People want our opinion. Um, it creates critique and um, and discussion about the game. Champion coach, pillar of the game, petulant coach. That was a petulant comment at the end. Nobody, everybody does press conferences after games. They have to do that. It's the way we sell the game. It's the way we promote the game. He is, a, as I said, a giant in this game. And um, it's just ridiculous to say, if it's all too hard, I'm not going to do it. Personally, uh, I felt that the Tom Papley comment was poor because I, I agree with John Longmore. You don't speak about other players from other teams, no well, matter you what do you think of it. Oh, no, well, that's not true. Uh, I'm saying... Well, Ross Lyon well, had every right to have a crack at Andrew Gaff a few years yes, ago. Yes, I'm talking about staging for free. That's different. Yeah, That's yep, different. Yep. I'm talking that that one was out of the box. I think you go as hard as you want if you're in that situation. You Would you find sure him for the other comment, did. do you think? Oh, I think the other comment, I'm, I'm on the lesser end of that. You know, I think... Saying the Swans had an extra man on the uh, ground, I think meaning said, the umpire. He said, but then there's swings and roundabout. Sometimes pretty much you win them. You didn't say win them, but that's what he's getting at. Swings and roundabouts. So I think this one's on the lesser scale, in my opinion, for we've seen his history and all those sorts of things. But I think the Papley area was wrong. But I, I don't think... Please explain. He explains that he wasn't looking to get personal, that it was something that he also said swings and roundabouts. And I think we move on. Cut. I don't think it's a big issue. Well, it, you'll be right, because the AFL do not yeah. usually stand mm. up to Alistair Clarkson. But I think it was a... To say there's an extra man on the ground, I think, is pretty strong, and I think he deserves a fine. I doubt he'll get one. Kane, would you find him? Uh, I'm a bit with Lordo on that one. I'm not. I, I want to hear the coaches' frustrations with umpires. We're going to hear from Ken Hinckley a little bit later. Brett Ratton the week before. That's what I want from that forum. If, if they're not there, I think Clarko is right in saying that. But I just wonder. I mean, 12 months ago, Alistair Clarkson could have named any club he would have gone to. I'm not sure his reputation in the last 12 months is that every club in the competition would sign him as coach for various reasons. No, namely, it's his game style. It is, is his game style now standing up to the modern game? We, we see Hawthorne bottom four for scoring. I really thought in the layoff he would have come up with something innovative for Hawthorne's game style. Secondly, it's his, well, his disbelief in the draft or he's not trust in the draft. He clearly doesn't think that is the way to rebuild a club. There's alarm bells there. 
Thirdly, the comments you just said there, can he sell, can he build a club, particularly if he doesn't want to do media and embrace it? That's what the club would want that signed him. They want him to be all in. And then there's the wage as well and what it would cost the club to get him with the new soft cap. So a lot of talk where he'll be suited next when his time at Hawthorns comes to an end. I'm not sure there'll be 17 clubs lining up for Clarko's signature. So, Kane, a big statement. I think the part that people will take umbrage with is the initial part, the, the tactical part of the game. I and mean, this is a, a man who won three back-to-back flags with three different game plans in 13, 14 and 15. Surely that ability couldn't have been diminished since. No, I'm, I'm not questioning his standing in the game, but has it gone past that now? And, and, and time will tell, but... It's, it's a while ago now that, that he saluted with those premierships and has struggled since, particularly in final. So what is the game, game style that he, he's standing up for and what is the way that he would go about rebuilding a list to maintain sustained success? Because what I've seen in the last two or three years hasn't been a method that's worked. Now, of course, it's difficult to start at the top. No one's expecting that and no one's taking away anything he's done in the game and his genius. But moving forward, if his contract is up in two years' time and he's 54 years of age and it's going to cost you a million dollars to sign him and they continue to struggle to score in the game style they're playing at the moment, I'd have my doubts. Matthew, I agree about the refusal to rebuild Mm. and the fact that there's not going to be the money in the game there might have been when Alistair signed his last contract. But to me, this is a bloke who needs to go somewhere else and I have absolute faith he can do it all again. Yeah, I remember Kevin Sheedy saying uh, after he finished that he probably went three years too long at Essendon and I just wonder whether a fresh start for Alistair Clarkson would be wonderful for Clarkson and would be wonderful for the Hawthorne Football Club. Where? I where, Caro? Lordy? Where well, I, I, haven't th- I haven't thought about it deeply enough, Sam, because there's still a lot of footy to be played out in the next 11 weeks but a team that isn't down the bottom and that is a team that just needs him to come in and finish them off or might only need a year or two. And as I said, he said a week or two, I'm committed to Hawthorne. Hawthorne said they're com- committed to him, but sometimes a fresh start. There, there, there was clearly... a basket part case in 2004 when he yeah. took over. So he's proven that he can take a team yeah, from he the has, bottom. Yeah, he has, but he's been... Not many can do A long time 16 ago. years ago, Sam. And, but, Kane, you, you've got to be joking. Do you honestly think supporters would care if he sold himself poorly in the media and behaved like a git occasionally, which he did the other day? And again, really, tonight, I reckon, by being petulant. I wouldn't care less if he was coaching my club and I'm a supporter and he's doing what he was able to do for Hawthorne. I don't think... I don't think the actual club would worry about that. I do think there is definitely tension at the moment within that club. You've got CEO strongly supportive of Alistair Clarkson, um, but Justin Reeves is relatively new in the job and not hugely experienced in this area. Jeff Kennett, who has clearly held him to account time and time again and seems to be wanting to stay for another term. And then you've got Graham Wright, sort of, who's very close to Alistair and they have robust discussions but has never been able to make him change his mind on the rebuild situation. So it's setting up for an amazing few months and it's not beyond the realms to say it could come to a head a lot earlier than the end of 22. They've got massive... You don't care if you're winning, you go Lordo. Sorry, you you don't care with those things if you're winning, Caro, but it's a bit different when you're 15th and you're averaging 50 points a game for the last month and you tend to look at things a little bit closer than what you do when you're, when you're winning yeah. premierships. Yeah, they, they last won a premiership five years ago. And, and that, when, when, with that success, you don't get great draft picks. But we take a look at St Kilda and Port Adelaide, who have also made poor decisions. So they've had Watson, Motlop, who haven't worked really. And I think you know, Hanabry hasn't worked at St Kilda. But you get protected when you've bought in good kids at the same time. And that's where you know, St Kilda... I know they've been penalised in the early years because they've won premierships. But that has to change from now. And I look at Gresham, Caulfield... Clark and King, sensational players for St Kilda now and are going to be the backbone of their next Premiership tilt. And Port Adelaide, Bergman, George Yard, as we've seen George Yard, as what he can do. Rosie Butters, Dersmer, he's changed that football club. Marshall, a star, and Powell Pepper's been a good player for them. So that's what needs to start happening from now, from now. So I'm saying Jayath on the half-back flank, put him in this week. Yep. Finn McGuinness, the father-son, Put him in this week. Mitchell Lewis, say if you thought to himself, OK, he's not working in the forward line. Let's try him instead of James Frawley at fullback. Let's try some things. And I just thought in the last two weeks, Sydney have said, OK, we've lost Heaney, we've lost Franklin, we've lost um, Kennedy. Let's start even moving the ball quicker. Let's use this time to put in all our kids and also to play in a more attacking brand of football. And I think that's what Hawthorne need to do. Throw away the negativity 
and play a bit more of an attacking brand in the last eight or nine. Yeah, months. I mean, the change in the in the draft stance would be an about face by Hawthorne mm. and Graham Wright, who have become famous for staying competitive mm. while trading out some of their high-end picks, like a Ryan Burton. Um, it's a very different way to what other clubs have done. It begs the question, Kane, what are some of the tough calls that Alistair Clarkson and Graham Wright and the rest of the football department will have to make? Well, they're not afraid to do it. We've seen it in the past, and I'm surprised it hasn't come a little bit sooner. But he did put it on the agenda last week. Here is the out-of-contract players and their ages. So, Sean Burgoyne champion, it's time for Sean to step aside. Piopolo is the same. A massive call on Stratton, out of contract. He probably gets another year, but it won't be his captain. Isaac Smith will survive, but you'd be nervous if you were Frawley Henderson and those underneath, probably apart from Sam Frost. So a number of big calls coming up that he's shown with Roughhead and, and Lewis and Mitchell and Hodge that he's prepared to make.